horrible art advice that's ruining your progress and we'll see why. I'm sure you've heard of them. The first one, you must have natural talent to succeed. So this is typically the mindset that discourages people the most. They think that, you know, you need to have something innate to start and be good at art. But let's talk about this notion of talent. For sure, there is such a thing as talent. However, talent isn't everything. And the way I see it, talent is like a little help in the beginning or maybe an ease at doing difficult stuff. The way I see talent is not like a gift, but it's more something that would be extremely difficult for some people, like spending 10 hours straight just focusing on a single eye, let's say. For you, if you have talent, it's going to be easier. That's how I see talent. It's just what might seem difficult for some is actually pretty easy and natural for you. However, talent doesn't make anything and you still need to put the work. You still need to put the hours. So the whole notion of talent is more a natural inclination. Maybe you like spending time inside in your studio and some people would find it absolutely impossible to do it. This is what I would call talent. Some things that are difficult for some are easy for you, that's all. But you still need to do those difficult things even though all this feels natural for you and you feel natural motivation and determination to keep pushing, it is still difficult in the end. So this is how I see talent and it makes you reconsider this entire notion of you need talent to be good at making art. Not necessarily, you need to put in the hours. There is some kind of a fetishization by people on this idea of talent because they've never tried to do something with enough, you know, resilience and determination and they haven't even attempted to do something like that. So they say, oh, it's just talent. No, it's not talent, it's still hard work. Even for somebody who is naturally inclined to do certain things, like stay inside and paint hours upon hours, it's still difficult work, no matter if you have a little talent to start with or not. In the end, it's all about determination, consistent practice, resilience, determination, motivation. The next one, you don't need rules or there are no rules in art. This is something that I heard when I was young in high school. I think this comes from the modernist idea of art that, you know, it's all about, you know, being innovative, being the first one to find an idea. It's really this modernist idea of being original as a sort of a cardinal value of art. And also in the 20th century, when modern art was introduced, there was this idea of tabula rasa, like sweeping the table, clearing the air so there is no rule to follow, no tradition, no classicism. Everything was rejected for the new mindset, the new idea of novelty. And this idea has persisted. And right now, in many art schools, you get there and you learn that, well, there are no rules. Well, obviously there are rules. And the thing is, you are allowed to break them as the modernists suggest. However, maybe it's a good idea to master them before you can break them. It's much more rewarding and artistically satisfying to understand the rules, follow them, master them at a very deep level. And once you have mastered all the rules, this is where you can really free yourself from them, but not before. There is this modernist mindset that there are no rules in art and everything is allowed fine, but this is what gives us this very incoherent art world today where you can't really see the value of things anymore. It's a very relativist mindset that states that whatever goes. However, I disagree with this. Not anything goes. There are things that are still better than others. Beauty is still better than ugliness. And your goal as an artist should be to pursue the best results you can. So try to follow the rules and if you want to break them, break them after you master them. Number three, speed over accuracy. For a lot of people, being fast equals being skilled. Wow, you paint so fast. Wow, you draw so fast. And a lot of people want to focus on this quality, almost like virtuosity. 
But speed alone doesn't give you virtuosity and mastery of your skills. If you really want to improve, you should focus on quality. And it doesn't matter if it takes weeks, months or years to finish a project. What matters is that it is as beautiful and perfect as you can. And don't worry about the speed, it will come when you really master your craft. The difficult things that used to take you many hours as a beginner will soon become like automatisms and they will really run as a sort of a background task and this will greatly speed up the process and soon enough you'll paint very quickly without even realizing it. Number four, you should learn to be more loose more tight or whatever like you know you should learn to paint differently paint with this certain style yeah this is something that you often hear you're you're not painting the right way like your brush style is not the right one this is not the the best way to paint uh this is something that you hear a lot from instructors like me uh, because each person has a a, a a personal style and think that their approach is simply the most natural and the one with the best flow so you want to um, tell your students or whoever you're talking to that they should try to follow it as much as they can but the thing is like your personal style is more something that's really integrated in and engraved into your personality like if you're a loose painter it's not just you have trained to be loose maybe you have but it's more like you have a character a personality that's really uh, likely to uh, enjoy the spontaneity the expressiveness and and you actually feel attracted to this kind of style on the other hand if you're more a tight a meticulous person it's maybe that you have a, an attention to details that's really in your personalities not just in painting you have maybe a very pronounced desire for realism a high level of realism and maybe a very loose brush style will not be satisfying to you at the end of the day this is what it's all about is this specific style going to be satisfying to you are you going to be happy at the end of your session if you paint with this certain style if it's not you your style is what remains at the end of the day after you clear your mind out of all the things that you've learned, when you really only trust your eye and trust your hand, what is left of your brushwork? I can even say that it's impossible to change your style. Like your style is so about your personality, your worldview. Maybe you can change your worldview, you can learn new things and you should definitely explore and try to not fall into the trap of being too loose or too tight. You want to explore the other side. However, this is not something that you control 100% of the time and your style should be just what feels the most natural to you. Don't try to paint like someone else, it simply doesn't work. And final one, copying masters is a waste of time. This is an idea that mostly comes from a mindset in which there is no tradition to follow, there is no legacy and you paint out of nowhere you are reinventing painting, congratulations, nothing was done before you and the masters of the past have not invented anything that you could not invent yourself entirely. Well, this is obviously a crazy mindset and obviously you have a legacy, you are part of a big history, the history of art, you are part of a tradition. Guess what, if you want to paint, people have been painting before you and will paint after you. Do you want to be a part of this tradition or do you think that you can simply reinvent everything every time and there, there is no such thing as legacy? If you do believe in tradition and legacy, then of course you have unlimited resources in the works of the past. The greatest masters of the history have painted before you and you should definitely learn from them. And the great thing about the, the works of the masters is that they have made all the difficult decisions for you, you just have to follow in their tracks. It's almost like somebody walking in the snow before you, it's much easier to, to step in their foot tracks. It's exactly the same with the masterworks, they have made the difficult artistic decisions and by 
copying them by by following in their foot tracks you can learn about their process and you can incorporate some of this stuff later when you work on your own projects again so study and copy the masters that inspire you i can assure you that this is not going to be a waste of time it is going to multiply your potential by an amount that you can't imagine all right my friend this is it for this video i hope you enjoyed it i'll see you for the next one and until then joy and inspiration to you bye